Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we are going to have a little chat about heavy intercessors because I had a bit of a plan. I was going to do a little force of heavy intercessors. I really like the idea of big, beefy infantry. You know my propensity for a bit of girth here and there. And the heavy intercessors just, I mean, they fit the bill. They fit the bill. Except the bill for the heavy intercessors is vastly more than I would have considered paying. £39.50 for five heavy intercessors. Now, that to me is a tad too much. That doesn't feel like a bargain. Now, admittedly, not a lot of Games Workshop stuff does feel like a bargain these days. Although, I will say, in terms of Age of Sigmar, if we're going into the the, the well-lit green uplands of Age of Sigmar in terms of pricing, 20 Skelly Boys for 36 quid isn't terrible. That's actually not too bad. That's less than less than two pounds a model, which is pretty decent, all things considered. Especially when you look at like other manufacturers, say look at like Reaper miniatures, for instance. I mean, their models are for the most part pretty cheap. Are they as well detailed? No. Do they come with options? No. Do they come with rules that you can use straight out of the box? No. They don't have any of that. So, in that respect, actually. Actually not bad in terms of cost, the old skellies, and the dead walker zombies as well. Compare and contrast that with Heavy Intercessors, where you have £39.50 for five models, as opposed to, say, even looking at Intercessors, just as just a plain old Intercessor unit, ten models, £35, and that is, uh, that is kind of garbage. This is obviously a very arbitrary decision in terms of, like, what is too much for you. For some people, that point was passed ages ago. For a lot of people, this won't phase them and they will just buy them anyway. Personally, it's completely killed any interest I had in that kit, just because it's starting to get to the point now where we expect a price rise pretty much with everything that's released. Everything is slightly more expensive than perhaps we would hope. There's the occasional rarity. I really, I really was actually surprised at the value of uh, some of the sum some of the uh, Soul Black Gravelord stuff, for instance, but Age of Sigmar doesn't seem to be struggling quite as badly under the inflationary side of things, although three bats for 31 quid was pretty funny. When it comes to 40k, well, when it comes to all of their stuff, really, let's be fair, things are kind of separated into easily recognisable little subcategories. So, Troops' choices tend to be the most economical in terms of how much money you spend for what you receive in return. That's because you need more troops' choices than anything else. Heavy support, elites, and fast attack, they typically cost more for less because you need fewer of those units, fewer of those models, and so Games Workshop prices them accordingly. That's why, of course, HQs are uniformly very expensive for what they are. There's no way around it. When you look at an HQ model compared to just anything you can get out of another kit, it is hugely expensive. That's because you don't need, you know, 20 Primaris Captains or whatever. You only need one or two, or, you know, you don't need to just absolutely fill the board with them. You need a couple, and as such, they're priced for the fact that you will only ever buy a couple. Heavy Intercessors, though, it feels like they fly in the face of all of that by being a troop's choice and being horrifically expensive for what you get. I mean, when you look at the actual value of what you are what you are getting with your money if you buy a a box of primaris intercessors you're looking at three pounds fifty a model now three fifty a model for a troops choice i don't think is too bad it's not terrible assault intercessors thirty six pounds fifty for the squad so a slight increase but you know again you've got different options you've got the rules that come with it you've got all of that stuff as well three fifty a model when you compare it to say, as we talked earlier, Reaper miniatures, for instance, the quality is infinitely better, and you've got all of the stuff that surrounds it as well. So, whilst it might be more expensive than, say, other other tabletop war games, it's not, it's not like, into the realm of insanity. With the Heavy Intercessors, for a troop's choice, you're looking at £7.90 a model, and that, to me, feels way too high. That feels way too high. Yes, they do have a higher power slash points cost, depending on which you are in favour of using, but it's still more than twice as much for a unit that, from what I can tell, and from what people have said, you're not getting twice the performance out of them. That's not what you're getting. I mean, Mikey from Hellstorm Wargaming, he did a really good video on them uh, the other day, which I will link in the description, because there's a good conversation there about kind of 
the I guess like perceived value versus cost that kind of thing. It's it's worth a watch, so I'll link it. But I mean, I don't know. For me personally, it's just killed it. It's like I look at some stuff that Games Workshop do, and I am pleasantly surprised because it's nowhere near as expensive as I thought it would be. The Soul Black Gravelord stuff is a great example of that. I was really expecting the skellies and the the zombies to be in squads of ten and to be, you know, about thirty quid. Totally honest. I mean, I really did expect that because that's the kind of thing that we're getting used to seeing from Warhammer Forty K. So seeing those in squads of twenty for like thirty six, which is actually less than two pound a model, it's actually pretty decent. That surprised me. Same thing with the Mother of Nightmares, Lack of Eye, where I expected that model to be about sixty quid, and it was forty. Of course, forty is still a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that that's like cheap, but it's way less than I thought it would be because. Everything is just getting more expensive. I mean, Lenneth Hesperax, it looks like she's going to be £26. £26 for a character. She's not even a massive model. She's not even a big model. In fact, there is some there is some uh, some prior uh, kind of like precedent for, for that sort of approach to a named character just costing way more than you think they should. Sigvold the Magnificent. I've got Sigvold, and uh, he is nowhere near the size that you would think he is for the amount he costs. He's £31.50. He's on the shelf, uh, just there. He is about the same size as Stormcast Eternal. He's just got a fancy base and a big cloak. He's really not that... He's really not that big for what you get. Like, he doesn't seem to match the price. That is really something that made me kind of look at other HQs, especially when it comes to to, to Warhammer 40k, where it's like, well, hang on. I, it, it seems like he's he should be more than he is. Are we going to start seeing named characters just get like absurdly expensive, even though they're not really anything special in terms of the, the, the size or, you know, what you actually get for the money? I guess the answer is kind of yes, because Lilith Hesperax, I don't think, to be honest... I mean, does she does she need to cost more than kits with options, for instance? There are no options. There's just her. There's just her, and that's it. Is that worth more than you know the amount of customization that you get out of like a Primaris Captain, for instance? I don't know that it is, and yet that's what she's going to cost. Similar thing with flayed ones. The flayed ones are going to be thirty one pounds. The flayed ones are flimsy as anything. They are absolutely wafer thin. They're not worth it for what you're paying. I mean, I wanted the flayed ones. I mean, like we talked yesterday in the midweek ramble. I was like, I want them. Nostalgia makes me want them. I don't want them now. <laughs> like, I genuinely don't. I'm going to skip out on those. Even with the discount from Element, which, you know, I always order my stuff from Element, as you as you are aware. God knows I talk about them often enough. Um, but why, I just don't see the value in some of these releases right now. I genuinely don't. And I know there will be many of you going, oh, finally, he's woken up. I've always known that Games Workshop is expensive. I know that. I'm fully aware of that. I have access to my bank and all the statements that come, you know, (laughs) from it. I know that Games Workshop is more expensive than a lot of other companies. But a lot of the time, what they make is nice enough and hits that spot enough for me to be okay with it. This this kind of upcoming weekend, a couple of things that I was genuinely looking forward to, I'm just not going to bother with, because I don't think that they are, I don't think they're good value for money, even by Games Workshop standards. You know, like when it comes to a hobby being as expensive as this one, there are at least things in there that comparatively feel like good value. You know, we've mentioned the the zombies and the skeletons multiple times this video. I think in the great, in like the grand scheme of Games Workshop's pricing structure, they are they are good value. When you look at things like the uh, the Warhammer Underworlds Warbands, I would also class those as being pretty good value. Things like the Necromunda stuff, again, those when you look at a lot of the other stuff Games Workshop makes, they feel pretty good for what they cost. Not so much five heavy intercessors for forty quid. Not so much a character with no customization or posability for 26 quid. Not so much five flayed ones, which, frankly, do not have the point or power cost to warrant being £31. 
I'm afraid all of those straight off my radar and I'm just looking at other things now because why would I spend that money when it just doesn't feel worth it? Anyway, let me know what you think of uh, the cost of those in the comments down below. I'm assuming a lot of it will be <laughs> very much in line with what I've just said. I can't see anyone going, actually, no, I think £40 for five is fine for a cheap choice. Although you might say that. I'm not trying to push you one way or the other. I am genuinely interested to know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. In the meantime, feel free to click all the things, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And uh, as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games. So if you are going to buy stuff that is Games Workshop related, you can get a discount on it and not be quite as sad when you <laughs> spend vast amounts of money on plastic, as we constantly do. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.